These are the top 10 most disappointing games of 2018. Number 10 What do you mean full? There was no f***ing component limit in you're Gundam full. Breaker. You're, you're Did they put one in? That would be lame as f What the hell was that? I have no idea. Well, let's just get this system right. Like, I can't even find a f***ing Zaku machine gun. Like, this is f***ing stupid. It's all the same f***ing parts! We're just gotta do the quest. Does Joe know that this is a like dating sim inside of a Gundam game? I would love if that's the case. New Gundam Breaker. I've recently gotten into rediscovering my love for Gundam. I've bought a bunch of obscure games from Singapore that have these English translations that uh, for whatever reason just aren't sold in the US much. Hell, they don't even have ESRB ratings. Games like uh, Super Robot Wars X and, and V, SD Gundam G Generation G Genesis. Yes, that's its actual name. And I even had to learn a bit of Japanese uh, to play a Japanese PS4 account to play the free-to-play Gundam Operation 2 on the Japanese PSN store. So, as a Gundam fan, I can relate to what they've been through recently. It's unfortunate to be, especially in the US, because it seems like most companies use the Gundam license as a dumping ground for like their first year developers using the same tired ass engines, the same tired mechanics. It's just very low efforts over and over and yet the Gundam faithful will buy them over and over. I have to go back to the Dreamcast and the Sega Saturn days to get some of my good Gundam fixes. However, one series that has survived is the Gunpla genre of action builders. I bought and played Gundam Breaker 3 where you build your own Gundams from different pieces and it was mindless action fun. Nothing too special, but alright. And unfortunately now we are given new Gundam Breaker and they're screwing that up with this game. Okay, begin main quest. Defeat. Quest fail. Hey, you fail. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. Okay, begin. Okay, gun tank. Here we go. This, this is a gun tank. These are gun tanks. Are you sure? Yes, I know my Gundam. So there's gun cannons and gun tanks. I, I know, I'm trying to get up. But there's people attacking me while I'm trying to do this. That fucking jerk. And then the targeting system is a piece of shit. And there we go. Quest fail. Fail. <laughs> what? I... No, I destroyed him. What the fuck is going on? What is with the constant fucking bitching in my ears? And the, and the constant the gun fuck You're and losing every, really bad I don't too. know what is happening. How could you get this wrong? The fun of collecting pieces for your Gundam has been restricted and limited to these few slots and the slow progression of getting cool stuff in this game, it's just, I don't even know if it has cool stuff. Instead, it's a bare minimum effort. It's this hidden high school dating simulator where most of the time you're looking at still drawn anime images of characters you don't even give a shit about that have never even been in any goddamn Gundam series. Look, she went to elementary school with me. Which one are you gonna pick now? If you had to She's pick got a little bit bigger, uh, you know, intelligent ratings. Uh huh. Intelligence rating. <laughs> so you're saying you don't like the purple hair? So you like the red hair? I yeah. The, the, I, like, the, I like red hair girl. The out the, the 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 Japanese dating Japanese games are weird. Like, oh yeah, I don't, no. I don't like them. There's oh. some shit. It's oh. the popular boys. Oh snap! There's a competition. Those guys have cool oh, hair, and that's how you know no. they're trouble. One sure. guy's got glasses. He's so intelligent. <laughs> oh, it froze. The game froze. Oh no, we'll have wow. to stop playing it. Oh no. They're like, they're all to us. It's a dating game. How? <laughs> How? Look at the intense requirements on your PC. New Gundam Breaker is worse than any of its predecessors, and it once again torments the Gundam fandom. 
I just wish that somebody would make a spectacular Gundam game. Even one that non-fans could get excited about. Number 9 We're giving you Blackout, and you love Blackout, don't you, John? That's true. I do love Blackout. I think it's the best, most polished Battle Royale mode. It easily trumps the closest competitor, PUBG. No, Joe, don't forget that they dropped a single player, nearly 33% of the value of the game. It's now just completely gone. Yeah, wait a minute. That's some fucked up do shit. It. No, yeah. don't do, do it. it. Don't do it. You can't possibly support Activision in this trash, Joe. You're not no, you don't to. do it. Do Shut it. up. <laughs> Shut up over there. Shut your fucking mouth. <laughs> Shut up, Joe. Don't do listen it. to him. No, please don't listen to do him. Do it. Don't. No. Yes. Don't. Do it. Call of Duty Black Ops 4. Yes. This is a relatively fun, surprising ass Call of Duty game that actually does make the list of disappointing games mainly because it could have been so much better. Don't get me wrong, I love the gunplay, the audio design, the multiplayer, the time to kill, the abilities, the gadgets in this one. I loved it all. It, I especially liked the blackout mode. It was battle royale done with polish. I spent tons and tons of hours playing it and streaming it, uh, getting really damn excited when we'd place high. Heal, heal. No, fuck. Yes! 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 Beard did it! Beard did it! Shark beard for the win! But it makes it hurt that much more to know that this could have been a 9 out of 10 or even a freaking 10 out of 10 had they included a bit more. A real single player campaign instead of cheaping out. Adding a ton more value to that package and, and supporting single player. In addition to the, fam you know, the famous zombies mode that they have this year. This could have been the best Call of Duties in years but instead it felt like just a ton of missing content. And worse, even more so that the reason it lands on this list now is that while at launch it didn't have any microtransactions, eventually Activision just couldn't help themselves and they waited until everyone wasn't paying attention to jam them in here, ruining the otherwise excellent experiences with these annoyances and tone-deaf products. A fucking red dot, freaking three pixels for a fucking dollar? Who thought this shit was a good idea? Seriously, Activision, this kind of crap is a new low, even for you. And while Blackout Mode is still fun, I worry for this game and the mode's future. In, in these almost yearly Call of Duty cycles, what will become of Blackout when the new Call of Duty comes out? And whatever it may be, I don't know, but they're intent on sucking their player base dry as much as possible before their next attempt. Number eight. Joe, why the hell did you take that way? It's, what do you mean? It's the only way I saw. There's a path here on the left. What? It's a bridge. What, what bridge? Got to... Joe, get get over here. Shadow of the Tomb Raider. It isn't bad. Uh, so it doesn't come close to the top 10 worst games list. But what it does do in ample amount is disappoint, okay? This new Laura Croft trilogy started off with a bang. I really enjoyed this series through and through. And it really brought Miss Laura Croft into the new generation of gaming quite well. Which is why it hurts all the more that the actual story and the conclusion of her story was done so poorly. It was dull without much impact. The evil organization that we were introduced to and started a fight just ended with a whimper and just none of it felt like a strong conclusion to an otherwise stellar series. Thankfully, the gameplay was fun. And there were a few mechanics, uh, mainly making our heroine into a cold-blooded, 
Rambo-like killer. It's terrible camouflage. You just rub mud all over your body. But did you see that? What? In my review, I had this impression that Crystal Dynamics had fully developed this, and I put it all on them. But if you notice, I think it was in fact Ideox Montreal that took on development as well. So, and the CD name is still on it. I don't know who to freaking blame for it, okay? All of this, and we didn't even get to freaking see Laura Croft wield her famous dual pistols and may have that make a badass comeback. Action! No, Laura, God damn it! What the? Yes? Yes? No! No! Eric, ready? And action! I said action! Yes! God damn it! Number seven. State of Decay 2 was, for a lack of a better phrase, a slightly improved carbon copy of the original, but with its own set of problems and issues that plagued it at launch. The game's entire resource system felt tacked on, you felt like you were doing chores for a lot of it, and the story never really developed. This is all stuff that Delrith encountered and I encountered, and I just didn't want to review the rest of it. I had such high hopes for its launch after the original State of Decay. It just needed some more polish. Co-op is going to be a major improvement over that original and offer tons of funds with friends in, in its environment. Unfortunately, we were never able to play the co-op portion of the game due to a widespread bug with connectivity which only served to hurt it even more. It was a game that had so much potential that could have been so much more than it was and because of these issues and letdowns I definitely had to include it on the most disappointing list. In this world of the living and the dead, how will you survive? Number six. Red Dead Online. So, Red Dead Online's component is not a bad game. It's actually pretty fun in many parts. And to be perfectly fair, the game is still technically in beta. Unlike Grand Theft Auto 5's online mode when it, when it came out, it didn't have the beta tag. So it's, it's just kind of as if Rockstar still doesn't really know what to do with its online mode here. Either that or for some reason they're taking way longer than GTA's online mode took to develop uh, with the same or even longer dev cycle just to try to finish this mode. But regardless, it's actually being monetized now with in-game microtransactions despite it only being a beta, okay? So because it's selling itself, it's opening itself up to criticism. And most of the negative comes from how freaking grindy it was at launch and how still grindy as hell it is right now without much to really spend on or do in the world. Where's the housing? Where are the more unique things to do? Sure, you've got these story missions and, there, and some of this is really fun and great. But I just, I guess I was expecting more on the second go around and, and lessons learned in the previous system. The camp system had so much potential and look, it may get better as this passes, but in 2018, which is what this list is based on, it was a disappointment for me, especially considering how damn good the actual single player game really is. So Red Dead Online, I don't really have much interest to continue playing it. Hopefully, maybe, when it comes out in its full release, it'll be much better and less disappointing. Number 5 
nobody I know is really playing it still. It, I don't hear anybody talking about it. It's I, out, and it has like three, two thousand viewers on Twitch. Like nobody's watching or playing it. It anymore. takes us three minutes to get into games. Sales are super low. Yep. Sales are oh, something yeah. like fifty percent, eighty percent down, or something from Battlefield One. Yep. And it just, I don't know. It, what it, the hell happened? Feels like it didn't go anywhere. Let's what what and we've played it and. What sucks is I'm already sick of the maps, Joe. How did that happen so quick? Because they removed everything. They're taking out less content. We got tired of it so full quick. Price. I was like, yeah. What the fuck? <sighs> Battlefield Five. Oh man, my favorite military franchise this year just overall disappointed me for sure. Making my top five, okay. After the good effort of Battlefield 1, Battlefield 5 mostly feels like a rescan without too much effort. It's just like, what happened to DICE? Why was the dev cycle just so rushed? Look, guys, game, whole parts of this game are completely fucking missing! There's some good tweaks to gameplay here and there, and there's some changes, but also some questionable ones. What bothers me is the game, this whole games as a service model, giving us two thirds of a finished game with missing freaking modes at launch. 25% of the story mode wasn't there. 25% or more of the multiplayer modes weren't there at launch. You had to wait around. There was missing customization. Even basic shit like a practice range wasn't there. The the promised co-op mode, still not even in the game. All oh, while they try to work in this questionable battle royale mode that doesn't even really seem to be a good fit. Like, how do they have the time to try to do all of this? Oh, there goes their tanks immediately. They just blew up all our tanks the moment we spawn. What the what f kind of game is that? Why would that be allowed? Because, but, not because, the fucking dice doesn't know what they're doing. What the f happen they're able to bomb our spawn the minute the game starts then there was the time to kill issues where they reacted to that but when they changed it the community backlashed and they wanted it uh, to change it back and I think mainly in my opinion that it had to do with the guns just not balanced for a longer time to kill and it really made those lower tier guns even lower tier but I think what it got miscommunicated because maybe the issue was more that time to death, not the time to kill, and that got all mixed up. And you add in this progression system that is broke, it's so freaking grindy feeling, which gives way to those rumors and outright confirmation that they will be adding microtransactions eventually, confirming this shit progression. Sure, season passes are gone and, and monetization is no longer tied to progression, but when you do this, this positive thing of removing that shit in such a misfired effort, it doesn't really have the best impact that you want it to. Add on top all of this, the controversies with the female character models in multiplayer, which I never give a shit about and it's fine, but the actual poor handling of females in the single player mission, which I do give a shit about, and these huge missed opportunities to tell actual unknown World War II stories that really happened instead of these fictitious bad you know 15 year old girl and her mother destroying the entire Nazi program when there were actual commandos that did contribute to destroying the heavy water you'll have to look all this crap up in my angry rants all right uh and and there was a a, a woman who her husband got killed by the Nazis and she went to the Russian government because she wanted to just yeah. attack them back and she was demanding a tank and and they relented yeah. on her there, there was also one of the and they gave her a tank and she would run out there one of the deadly snipers and soldiers in the entire war was a Polish sniper who was a woman that went around and just killed everybody. You see, so if yep. they would have been doing the that, then I think that you could have had your, hey, females participated in the war too as resistance fighters and things here and there. So why did you, so if you wanted to tell these untold stories, why didn't you tell the untold stories? Instead, you made up shit and it just looks like, it looks embarrassing, like a, just yep. a, a half-assed political agenda kind of thing that they were pushing into the game i don't know how well this game will truck along i hope ea and dice get it together 
for the next installment because if things keep going in this direction, they are in serious trouble. I ju it just shocks me that there are no you know, well-known battles or maps from World War II that people can latch on to, and I think that that was a big problem. Number four. We happy few. This game actually launched in July 2016 in early access. It's just a freaking mess. It's that big of a mess over this many years. Yet they kept, you know, pl plugging away at it. It got some support from Microsoft and eventually released as 1.0 in August. And so I thought, okay, it's gonna be good. Nope, disappointing. The full game, while well, better uh, than the state it was back then, unfortunately still doesn't live up to the hype that I had going for it. Again, it's not the worst game. It's not even a really particularly bad one, except for certain sections, boring sections. But it's on here because of its disastrous launch, its long early access, its development cycle that seems confused on, on what game it wanted to be and switching things in mid-development. It was truly frustrating, that's why. It even still came out in a poor shit state, despite all this time in early access, as featured by Jim Sterling. Sure, there's some interesting things here and there, some great story potential, but all the actual gameplay just doesn't quite live up to the premise. It's repetitive, it's sometimes boring, it's got those survival elements without the huge negatives of that mechanic anymore in this more uh, story-focused linear version, but it's still got issues. Just running past, you could just run past everything. It's got awful AI, bland city design, crappy fetch quests, and it just kind of feels like the lesser version of Bioshock. <laughs> Number three. Yeah! Yeah! Show that tree, boss, Del! Del, go! I was fucking Hit the up, tree! Let me... I got it, I'll get it, I'll get it! Yeah! Woo! <laughs> Am I making you proud, Jen? Oh! 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 That is just my trailer! Atlas is in early access and normally I don't put early access on these lists but this one is being sold for a full $30 with a discount previously but even that was too much for what's released at launch okay it's lagging what I the can't, I can't, is going on are you so serious can I can't even it? fucking fight a wild boar without the game fucking flipping out what a piece of shit Everybody's just brutally fucking harvesting it. Holy okay. shit. Okay, we hide. managed to get it fucking trapped in a circle. And then, since we all were in sync, we were able to kill it. Game of the year. And honestly, most of all of this could have been avoided if not for their boneheaded company trying to market this as something it's not. And don't get me wrong, that's exactly what they did. Don't even defend this bullshit tactic. The trailer looked nothing like the straight ARC clone that this game ultimately is. Bruh! Yeah. I, I, come on, dude. And then why am I spawning in the fucking ocean, dude? Oh, How are you guys able to come out with a game this fucking early access is mind-blowing. It's ARK DLC, plain and simple. It even had ARK game elements in the fucking main menu screens before the devs 
quickly patched that out. Broken game mechanics, broken systems, claiming system is out of control. There's no land anywhere. There's no land anywhere. It's if you taken. are looking for foothold, there are people drifting fucking hobo clans, <laughs> fucking drifting from island to island trying to find <laughs> land, and they can't. And a ton uh, amount of crashes and just general awfulness led to one of the year's biggest disappointments. You just have to look at the trailer versus reality. That's all you need to know about this game. You know, fight the game for food, water, and fucking vitamins. Yeah, take your vitamins, Johnny. Fuck off. You're in the way of having fun in a pirate adventure. You think pirates took their vitamins? No! And second, number two, it is nowhere in the date of the trailer does it say early access. This seems to imply that the game is ready to launch, ready to go on this date. Surprise! No! Not surprised. This is scummy. This is underhanded. It's straight deceptive. Worse, they made their devs work through the holidays trying to fix all of the game's broken shit so that they could soak up as much Christmas money and holiday money that they could. Just awful. Fuck Atlas at launch. And you know, it may eventually be worth it, but it certainly wasn't worth it in 2018. That's what this list is about. It still ain't worth it right now, especially for the full ridiculous $30 that they're asking for it at the time of this video. <laughs> the Lord, the second I hit spawn, I crashed the server. Great. Great Atlas. Yeah, no, this is, this is just gonna happen a lot. Um, get ready for this. Number two. Wait, is that it? Is that really it? I've waited years for this stupid mustache. I bought that mustache for this game. There's no end game. There's no character building. There's no progression. What the fuck? Every quest is the same goddamn thing. I spent sixty dollars on this. Get on fucked it up. Get on fucked it up. Sea of thieves. Yeah, you bet your ass I put this on the list. For me personally, I was waiting far longer. And just this this hot anticipation for Sea of Thieves from the great rare. Perturbed Pedro. Kill them all. Kill them all. <laughs> Rare, they might be able to pull this off, this really awesome pirate adventure. The trailers looked great. And I was like, they're, they're taking their time too. It took so long to come out. And it has all of the problems that Fallout 76 had. A lack of contact, shitty AI, crappy quests. It's more fun with friends, but that's all. And I had way more hope for Sea of Thieves because I, I, it looks better and it should have been better. Unfortunately, at release and through most of 2018, Sea of Thieves was an awful, awful letdown. It's not that the game isn't visually impressive. It, it is beautiful to look at. God, this game is so beautiful. I love the art style. Man, look at this water. It's so beautiful. Go that looks shoot. good. Look at the water, man. Go that looks good. And it's not impossible to have fun. Oh my God, you're so fucking fat. <laughs> <laughs> and this mother <laughs> eats a banana in front of me. <laughs> It was that it was so bare bones, so devoid of content, so monotonous, so boring, so dull. And they charged us, don't forget this, a full $60. Despite knowing that it was a shell of a game at release and Microsoft knew it and Rare knew it. Combat was crap. It's just skeletons over and over. You know, enemies besides skeletons. I see skeletons and skeletons. Uh, more skeletons. And more goddamn skeletons. We don't God. need any more. Ah, what an interesting quest. Look for those. Eat the shit. Joe, there's nothing here. Arr, 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 arr. 
PvP was near broken as ships respawn and came right back at you in a never-ending loop. It has so much in common with Fallout 76. You know what? This isn't the rare that we all knew and loved. This game pretty much cemented that forever. It put the final nail in the coffin of rare. I can no longer trust this company to be at a triple A level. Whether it's because everybody has already left that company behind or is whether it's because they just don't have the talent. Okay? I'm not sure what it is, really. Not now. Sure, they have constantly added new things into the game and in this big rush to get the thing to be at the level it should be. But for many, it's too little, too late. The damage has been done, and few will even return to its shores and open seas again. When will I get my dream pirate game? When, damn you! For now, it seems like the best pirate game I can remember other than is maybe Assassin's Creed Black Flag. You let me know what yours is in the comments. Number one. Well, I was lied to. We were all lied to and betrayed. Betrayal. Yeah, this is all I wanted. Shut the door. Fuck this place. Shut the door. Fallout 76. How can this game not be on the list, okay? Bethesda really blew it with this one, okay? Fallout 76 was a disaster, in my opinion. It felt so much of a low-effort cash-in. All the worst elements of survival genres, the old survival genres, just mashed together without much thought or effort. <laughs> That's Bethesda. Everything failed to live up to what we had thought it had going for it. Yeah, I was saying something. 16 times the detail. I was definitely saying something. That's for sure. The game is literally destabilizing in front of me. There's a glitch in the matrix. It's actually, oh my God, it's just getting worse. In every direction, oh my God, the game is destabilizing. 16 times the detail. I'm walking into an invisible wall right now. All of this just works. It's not, I'm not kidding. And it, again, it, it just works. Hell, even the microtransactions, even the microtransactions themselves were ridiculously l low effort. What the hell happened, Bethesda? You want me to spend $18 for fucking blue? What is this, Evolve? No, Bethesda, no! You guys are fucking incompetent. This really put the whole company into a bad light. Blunder after blunder followed and put them in the biggest hole I've seen them in in recent memory. The game's engine, oh my god. This time it features all new rendering, lighting, and landscape technology. Rendering. Really? You can hear it? It's right over there. There it is, see it? No. Oh, yeah, I Do you not it. see that helicopter? What right? the fuck? Right there. Yeah, I see it, now. it just it spawned just in. Yeah. That pop in is fucking terrible. And this time it features all new rendering, lighting. Look at this. Like, can I just ask? Okay. Tell me where that light is coming from, okay? <laughs> The way it looked, the way it was in, left such a poor impression. No NPCs, no choices, no meaningful dialogue, and even more bugs than their previous games. Are you fucking kidding me? It took everything fans loved about the Fallout series and shit all over it. Every single expectation we had destroyed. I still have no idea if they can even repair the game into a tolerable state, which further adds to the disappointment. I think the game's execution is it's just fundamentally flawed. 
and won't really ever be worth its weight, especially in PvP or exclusively in PvP. This franchise deserved something built from the ground up, something purposefully crafted and tailored to its lofty goals and promise. Nope! Instead, we got a cheap suit, fucking Frankenstein suit cobbled together with the shit just slathered on it from other games. You just take the shit and you put it on it and you sell it. I hope to God in the future, Bethesda can pull their head out of their fucking ass and refrain from screwing up the Elder Scrolls or the promising Starfield. Please, God, do not mess those up. Let this be your wake up call. This is the golden age of gaming. Make the player proud when he's playing your game. Make yourself proud that you made it. Make your player proud that he bought it. And it works, it, it actually works perfectly. I think she's just bugged. I genuinely think she's just bugged. Go where you want, what, do whatever you want. So oh, she's like right here, I just can't see her. Make your player proud that he She's glitching it. out, it, man! It, it actually works for you. Well, that's it for this list. But I do have a question for you guys. Should I continue doing the top most disappointing games? Because I think too many people think that all of these games should be very bad. You know, like the games I put on it that are actually kind of alright, but just disappointing. The disappointing list, it, it's such a weird animal. Should I just cancel it and just focus on the worst games and, and take a few from disappointing and put it on worst? I don't know. Let me know, do you want me to cancel this series and just focus on worst? Or do you think that the disappointing list has a place in, in the year-round wrap-ups, okay? Leave me a comment, tell me your most disappointing games, and if I missed any, and uh, whether you disagree or agree, thank you guys so much for watching, and up next, it is the worst games of 2018. Oh yeah, buddy. And don't assume what's on it, because there might be some more on it in You know what I mean? All right, I'll see you then on the next Angry Joe Show.